All right, I have never done a video like this. This should be quite interesting. We are going to blow a CPU up because I'm curious at, as to what point it happens. Designed to bring a balance of performance and cost to gamers, the BG5 M.2 SSD from Keoxia is an obvious choice. The BG5 SSD utilizes Keoxia's fifth generation 112 layer BI-CS flash 3D memory and uses a DRAM-less architecture leveraging host memory buffer technology to maintain affordable power and efficiency. And for those needing a more robust storage and professional use, Keoxia CD7 features PCIe Gen 5 and 32 giga transfers per second, perfect for enterprise and data center solutions. To see the complete list of storage options from Keoxia, whether it be for everyday use in PC gaming or professional enterprise and data center solutions, follow the sponsored link in the description below. I can hear you guys already. <clears throat> That's not fair. We need a CPU and that you're blowing up a perfectly good one. This is an Intel Confidential CPU. I could not give it away, sell it, trade it, or have it leave my possession. So that sucks for you guys because I can't give it away. But anyway, <clears throat> it's a 9900K. I didn't want to blow up anything really new or like super useful, but we have other 9900Ks and I wanted to use this specific config for a very specific reason. This is the uh, Z390 dark motherboard from EVGA. It has a built-in CPU stress test right here. So stress test, right? So this will automatically start stressing the CPU. It's not quite as stressful as say like Cinebench or something, but it gives us voltage reading, frequency, as well as temperature. Now I'm not planning on necessarily doing any sort of overclocking because I'm curious specifically about the voltage. I wanna see what happens to the CPU if we overvolt it and remove all of the safeguards. This, I was a little bit inspired by a couple of things. One, Cletus McFarland's recent video where he put gasoline in the oil, like remove the oil and put gasoline in and actually was able to run 17 laps with the Crown Vic around the Freedom Factory before it completely like blew a hole in the bottom of the engine. This is sort of like the same thing. Only this is if we just did a massive tune on an engine with no safeguards whatsoever. Now, there are obviously built-in safeguards in the system where, and I'm looking at what the temperatures are currently right now, because this is our limiting factor right here. We need to disable any sort of over temp protection because if I were right now to, to pump the voltage to say, what does it allow on this motherboard? Up to three volts on the, C, on the CPU. Right now we're in normal, which is up to 1.4 volts. Extreme goes up to three volts. Warning, high voltages can cause permanent CPU and or system damage. It's the and or system that worries me. That's why I have all these other fans on here because as I'm pumping a ton of voltage into the CPU, it's gonna put a huge amount of stress on the VRMs. The VRMs have to supply that voltage. I also have uh, some on the chipset down here, although it shouldn't be affected. I also have these three fans on full blowing across the motherboard. I'm trying to provide as much cooling to the board as possible before the CPU itself goes kaput. I'm also running Kingpin KPX on here. What I could have done is just like the old days, just not put a cooler on there at all, turn off the safeguards, turn it on and watch the hotspot form in the center and then have it eventually melt itself to death. Um, but we very well could potentially destroy this motherboard by doing this. This should be seen as nothing more than just science for the sake of seeing what happens. I know it seems wasteful, but like I said, I couldn't give you guys the CPU if I wanted to. It sounded like I didn't want to. I like giving you guys stuff. I just can't give you this one, okay? You know, no, you know what? I'm gonna start at like 135. Override is where the voltage we dial in is the voltage it's going to do, right? So we have to reboot that and it should come on now around 135. That's pretty solid. Look at that, 1.305, that's pretty close. So now if I stress test this, look, look at it. We immediately jumped up 5C. And look at the voltage though, 1.334 under load. And that's because of the VDROOP settings I just, I just did. So if we wanna see how VDROOP affects it. So I, I wanna give you guys some information. So it's not just look at this idiot on YouTube blowing up CPUs for the hell of it. No, this, this, these are the risks you take when you start overclocking. And I want you to see specifically how VDROOP and voltages obviously affect temps and such. But yeah, we're already at 65C by bumping up the voltage 0.1 or 100 millivolts. So that dramatically affected our temperatures right there. Um, also, this obviously has a lot to do with the cooler that's on there as well. So this is a 360 AIO. It's decent for cooling. These temperatures are less about the liquid thermal capacity in this AIO and about the transfer of the heat out of the die through the IHS into the cooler. But if I were to go now to the droop and just put this back at default, I'm curious. Yeah, look at that. See, there is droop now. And look at the difference in temps between 1.33 and 1.275, look at that. 6C, 
So by adding droop, right, more droop, that means it's gonna go down lower than our target. So 25% less droop, that should be right about where I want it to be. Yeah, so there we go. And you can see not really much of a change with temps, about, a, about one degree. <clears throat> so it looks like minus 25% is perfect to keep it right on our target. Let's go 1.35. And I don't think that's going to apply unless I reboot, right? Yeah, oh, what? Okay, I didn't know that I could do this without a restart. So that makes this even simpler because it means I can keep it going and booted. Uh, I believe 105C is our limit. So two volts is our max, not three. Um, anyway, I can't find anywhere in here where it allows us to turn off the thermal limit. 1.35. I just want to see where our temps immediately shoot to. Okay, so it's about 65, 66. Over time, obviously, it'll go up a little bit. But I'm really curious as to where the initial slingshot goes to. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel that. Yes, I know we're not saturating our fluid. I don't care about the fluid. I'm not testing the cooler. Isn't it funny how point or 25 millivolts is like 2C? So we're about to hit 69. We're about to hit nice and then 70, that's only 1.376. So what's funny is the new CPUs are using this much voltage and you can see now why they get so hot. That much voltage for the E-Core, P-Core and then it's hitting like 90C on water. I'm legit concerned about my uh, 12th gen system I'm building for myself. All right, we got 1.4. Now is where we're gonna start seeing things potentially get a little toasty. But you know what though, to be honest, this is not the most demanding stress test. It's truly not. I just didn't want to install an OS. I'm going to do 25 millivolt increments, 1.425. I really would like to know what, what kind of test this is running because if I tried that with Cinebench, that'd be an instant lock. I guarantee it. Let's go 1.5. Ooh, that was... <laughs> well, you went 1.425 to 1.5. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> I'm trying to speed this up a little bit. All right, 1.525. Oh, it's red now. <laughs> it's angry. <laughs> What's going to happen here is it's going to hit that temp temperature limit. And if it, and if it hits that hit limit and doesn't go any higher, then I have to find the setting somewhere in this menu system that will turn off those safeguards. This is a, this is a kingpin board. It sh should not have safeguards. It should just come with a disclosure. Look at where it's idling now. <laughs> it's idling it's so hot. 1.55. It's just like, ah! the CPU is like, what are we doing? Remember when the temperature was underneath these? Uh -huh. <laughs> 1.575. I have never gone this high. No, I take that back. I've gone 1.6 volts on an X299 7980XE or whatever it was. I've gone 1.6 volts on that, hit six gigahertz all core. So yeah, this is now in territory where I've not really gone before. All right. 1.6, here we go. I'm not sure we're gonna make it to two. Oof, look at that. I'm expecting this to be somewhat non-dramatic. Hey Nick, why don't you get the fire extinguisher off the wall too, just in case? Because if we blow <laughs> if we blow a cap or something, it's just gonna Right after you said it's not gonna be dramatic. How hot? Well, I just watched the slow-mo guy's video about the caps exploding, <laughs> yeah. so I don't feel any warmth at all. Like these v these VRMs are so beefy and with the fan blowing down on it and the fans going across it, I'm not worried about the board. Tank's getting warmish on the intake side for sure. And then it's pretty cold on the out on the output side. I wonder why. No no. <laughs> 1.65. Okay. I think I think we're being like no, the I mean, we should see the frequency drop, right? If we're actually thermal throttling. Okay, so if I go 1.65 now, and we see the same behavior, then we'll know it's throttling. Wow. Yeah, but look, 100C, it's not going, it's not going any higher. That's too, that's too locked. Unless it's just not reporting over 100 and it's like 100 plus. Okay, fine, we'll go 1.7. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think it's just not reading anything higher than 100. 1.75? Okay. That to me sounds like protection. Because if the CPU died right now, yeah it, even it, yeah, it wouldn't even power on. Like pushing the power button, nothing would happen. Yeah, so that's protection. That's like voltage condom right there. I need to find where the settings are to turn all that crap off. So we went ahead and hooked up the multimeter here and I gotta make sure these do not touch that is direct V-Core <laughs> probing. So it says 1.238 volts. 
So it's 1.231222. So it's funny, the software shows a little fluctuation, but if we look at, like at the hardware, it is not moving at all, right? Uh, under load, okay, yeah, so 1.238, 1.243. So you can see how these small fluctuations here, like when it shows up and down, which of course now I call it out, it's not doing it, are not happening here on the, on the hardware side. 1.239, 238, it's very solid. I mean, it's interesting to see what the voltage does at boot, right? 0 0.9, so on a clear CMOS now. We should see that go back to like 1.2 again. Ooh, that hit 1.6. 1 1.5, you saw that, right? Yeah. So, okay. How many people have experienced the CPU dying on a startup? You're like, <laughs> there's your reason why. Like. I said this in a video before. I said, when a motherboard turns on, it like punches the CPU for a second. It's like, wake up! There's your proof of it. And it's like boot looping now. I wonder if we just broke the motherboard. So anyway, you saw that, right? Let's, let's do that again. I'm gonna turn it off. Watch the screen. When I hit power, watch how much, and this is hardware. This is not, this is sensing the voltage. It's not like, software which could read weird. Watch this, when I turn it on, 1.24 on that one, which was normal. Hit it again. See, on a restart, nothing happens, right? Turn power supply off. Turn power supply on. Let's see when we wake it up. Boom, 1.47. So, it hits it with voltage. It truly does. 1.5. So there's your proof right there that when you turn on your system, that is the hardest moment for the CPU. I like snapped on the screen, that's pretty, yeah. And then money fell out of the sky. Fuck. Hey, there's a hole there though. <laughs> it's where money could fall from. <laughs> <laughs> no, we put money up there. I shot things up there with an air gun. <laughs> All right, 1.625. Now we're back. 1.617. So it is applying the voltage. So I absolutely now could leave this running. Oh, look at that, look at that. It's start, we're starting to actually throttle now. See this? Yeah. But that's fine. What if I do this? What if I, because I care about the voltage, right? Or if I just drop this to like four gigs, right? Easy. <laughs> I care about the voltage, not the frequency it's running at. Look how much the temp came down, 10C. 700 megahertz. I, I am shocked, honestly, that it has not popped already with what we're doing to it. 1.65. It is doing 1.64. <laughs> this is not a real world test. 1.7. Oof. Oh, we're already throttling there. But look, it's fucking 1.692. <laughs> Jeez, I feel like, look at the, look at the frequency. <laughs> yeah, we need to turn off that that temperature limit. Almost every other motherboard I've ever had it allows me to disable that. 1.75? I mean, I guess we gotta make it to two at least. But it's throttling now, which it wasn't before. Yeah, it's throttling hard. Let's go to 1.8. Dude, it's throttling like 1700 megahertz technically, 29 more than that. This is impressive though. It's literally like, I am doing everything I can not to die right now. You know what I mean? Sure, the frequency reduction is absolutely making this less of a problem, but this is still the voltage being applied to the die. Okay, regardless of the frequency it's running at, this is still absolutely the issue here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is impressive though, the way it can actually keep this from dying right now. 1.9? Dude, this is stupid. <laughs> the frequency graph? 1.8 gigahertz. That's exactly like my E6300 was right there. 1.86 gigahertz. All right, let's just go to two. 800 megahertz, but it can't throttle anymore. Oh, there it goes. Two gigs or two, two volts. So the question is, did the motherboard just reset itself? Yes, it did. It intelligently realized you guys are stupid <laughs> and it redid everything. It's a perfect time to show some of the behavior differences between the boards, because look, it's at five gigs, 
uh, and at 1.323 volts on its own because the ASUS boards, especially back in that era, were automatically applying like enhancements and stuff out of the box, which is a problem because some CPUs couldn't actually run those enhanced settings. So things were crashing out of the box and it was the motherboard's fault and people thought it was a bad CPU. So I'm disabling all that right now. AI overclock tuner, we're setting that to manual. Um, Multi-core enhancement is disabled. And CPU core ratio, I am going to sync all cores and I'm going to make that limit like 45. 1.45, there, <laughs> we'll start in the yellow. How's that? Just boot. I'll have to call out the temps. They're in the little Q code right here on the side that you guys can't see. We set the max to 115. So we are allowing more voltage, more temperature. I'll be honest with you, like I would have, if you told me, hey Jay, you're gonna be pumping a ton of voltage into a CPU up to 1.9 volts and it's not gonna die with a standard AIO with even just turning it on, I would have, been like, y'all are crazy. Um, because we have to use a Windows test here, we're just gonna do 3D Mark's um, CPU test. Here we are, 1.45 volts, which is high, but not astronomically high. 63, 68, 66. Okay, by reducing the clock from the five gigahertz down to the 4.5, clearly temperature-wise, it can handle it just fine, because it's showing 68 on the package. This video's getting long-winded, because apparently I can't kill a CPU on purpose. V-Core, 1.643. Let's see what the temps do when I load something. So here's the core temps right here. Jeez, <laughs> 90 degrees, it's like bouncing around. Look at that, 90, it was like 98 on the, on the package for a second. It's fine. What if I run something like heaven to just put a light load on the CPU? 107 on the package for a second. Look at that. When it was loading, it shot up to 107. Four five. Oh yeah. That was obviously the core that loaded. But look at look at that. It's like actually pretty reasonable. It locked up. It says 88. Oh, it went back in. It went back to the future. <laughs> That's how unfunny the joke was. The computer died. <laughs> it can't load 3D Mark. It crashes every time I go to load 3D Mark. See, it hits 100C right there. 106 on core 2. 108. There it goes. Die! <laughs> I've never wanted a, a CPU to die so badly, and it won't. So we've reached a power up cycle now where it's continuously shutting down. See? Gets the 9C, then zero, 00. We might have actually damaged the CPU now. Ooh. 9C is straight up V-Core. Your CPU isn't getting enough voltage. <laughs> That's what someone wrote. Bro, I don't think, I, I think it's the opposite <laughs> of that one. This is consistent behavior. This is what I was looking for. CMOS clear? Clear! Oh my God, it initialized. This thing will die. I can't kill it! <laughs> Bro, I don't have, what time? It's just, I've been doing this for hours. We need to label this CPU, Nick, as... <laughs> Toasted? <laughs> stretched. I don't know what to call it, but I, we definitely... We definitely, yeah, this is a reused stretch bolt for sure. Uh, <laughs> we cannot get it to go above 3600 now. Um, <clears throat> it's like the turbo is completely dead in. Look, I'm, I'm sync all cores, right? And it, it was at 50, but it's target up here. You can see it's applied, look, right? So. If I go to 50, okay, our target is 50, 50, right there. ABX is 50 because it's zero. And then 3600 is showing. So if I reboot, look, it will not turbo anymore. So what if I do this? There's, obviously it's ignoring because we are not booting six gigahertz right now. Although with that voltage, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Now look, it's completely ignoring. We broke the turbo. I didn't know you could do that. That is new to me. Yeah, 
3.6, it has just ignored everything I've told it to do. Look at the vid, it's all the way down to 1.8. You mean 0.8? Or 0.8, sorry. I'm so used to the ones, but we're still throwing 1.572 vCore at it. But it's not converting into vid. But the core clock though, look, it's throttling. 2.8, 2.7, so 2.8, 3.1. It's, wow. why is it throttling there? Yeah, that is weird, right? Because the current temps are not high enough for it to throttle. It's like, I don't, I don't know which chart we're following. Okay, we broke it in an unexpected way. For sanity's sake, I need to now take this, and I know this video has been long, guys, but this is interesting. I wanna take the CPU out of this board and put it back on the EVGA board and see if it's behaving the same. If it will no longer follow any of the things we're telling it to do other than voltage, because the motherboard solely controls that, that tells us we broke the turbo settings in this. We are now back on the EVGA board. Let's see what happens. I was like, that's taking a while longer to <laughs> reset yeah. itself. <sighs> okay. Three, six. That's expected. Now, if I do the test, it should go up to four, seven. <laughs> it's a lot harder to kill a CPU these days, which is all I wanted to show. And what I was hoping for was a little bit of magic smoke. I was hoping for potentially, well, I got one more try. <laughs> I went five, two. <laughs> okay, so it is absolutely. Oh, 5.3 was like, nope, which is that hard limit we kept reaching with the CPU. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. You remember the old videos where you could see like somebody had a, took the cooler off like an old AMD CPU and turn it on, you just see it like a hotspot form and like. I was honestly hoping for something like that. So the good news is, I do believe the CPU to be. Fine. It's fine, I swear, everything's fine. It's a lot harder to hurt your stuff than you, ex than you would expect. So, does this video serve as that purpose? And y'all can not be mad at me anymore because the CPU is fine. I think. Yeah, it's fine. So, you don't have to be mad at me anymore. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs>